Okay, here's a little video on handstands, in particular on hand placement. I've got a lot of clients that I'm training online and sometimes it's very hard to see how they're placing their hands in their handstands through video content alone. So here's a little tutorial on hand placement. Okay, there's three main points I wanna talk about in terms of hand placement in the handstand. The first thing we're gonna talk about is hand width. How close together or how far apart should we place the hands? With a lot of beginners, you see them placing the hands quite wide, okay? The reason for this is it's much easier to keep the elbow locked and to bring the hand overhead when we go wider. It's much harder to keep the elbow locked and to place the arms overhead in this position. So if you've got tightness in the shoulder, you'll naturally want to start to go wider. But we really want to start to work the hand placement inwards so it's roughly shoulder width apart. One way to measure this is what's called a cubit. The length from your elbow pit to your fingertip is your cubit. I'm gonna place my middle finger here over the nail of my fingertip here onto the floor. I look at where the elbow is and the middle finger of the opposite hand will go there as well. So this is roughly my shoulder width grip and where I would place my hands. Another thing that this does for us is it starts to stack the finger knuckle, the first knuckle, the second knuckle, the thumb, the elbow and the shoulder in a nice vertical line. So the force now is going straight down into the floor when I'm doing my handstands. So in this position you'll see nice and stacked vertical line. If this is wider, now the line is going in this direction. So it becomes harder to hold the handstand as the hands go wider, okay? Because you're starting to stack more of the body weight onto the muscular system. If I'm stacked nice and vertical here, it's easier to hold the handstand for longer durations because now I'm sitting on the skeletal system or the line of force is pushing down through the skeletal system. So the first thing we want to work on is that hand placement. If you've got the shoulder mobility, we want to be working in to roughly shoulder width apart. Okay, the second point I want to talk about is the rotation of the hands in the handstand. A lot of clients when they first start training handstand, will place the hands on the ground with the hands turned out. If we're lacking wrist extension, or we're lacking external rotation in the shoulders, turning the hands out gives us a little bit more range in the wrist, and it also helps us to lock the elbow, okay, with the limited external shoulder rotation that we have. Ideally, what we wanna be doing is we wanna be putting the index fingers forward, okay? So like the number 11, they're pointing forward here. This requires us to have good wrist extension and it requires us to have good shoulder external rotation so we can lock the elbow and stack the joints above the wrist. What this allows us to do when the finger is pointing forward here is if I'm going to fall out of the handstand forward, I can use the fingers and the wrist to control and stabilize the balance in the handstand. Okay, If the hands are turned out, I really only got the thumb and the index finger that's going to support and control me. So I'm a little bit weaker in this position. The fingers forward, I've got the thumb, the index finger and the middle finger. So as I fall forward in the handstand, I can push into the ground and bring my weight back into this position. If you find you're struggling here, you need to work on wrist extension and shoulder external rotation so you can keep the elbows locked and you can kick up into the handstand with the fingers pointing forward. Okay, the final point that we want to cover is again hand placement on the ground or just how we should grip the floor. A lot of clients when they first start will place the hand on the floor flat with the fingers flat in this position. What we want to try to be doing here is we actually want to try to place the index finger and the middle finger on the floor and we want to drag them back in so the second knuckle is bending here. We also want to grip the ground with the thumb in this position, okay? Notice that the fingers are spread out. I'm not having the fingers close together, okay? So we want a nice wide area on the ground and we want to grip the floor by dragging these fingers in and bending these knuckles and gripping here with the thumb. With the elbows locked, I want to try to feel the weight in the middle of the hand when I'm doing my handstands. Having this awareness of where the weight is allows me to control the handstand. If I start to lean forward, the weight comes into the knuckles and I can use the fingers to push me back and find the weight in the center again. 
If the weight comes more towards the heel of the hand, I need to suck my stomach in and round my back a little bit so that I can get the weight to shift back and be back in the center again. There's always lots of minute little adjustments happening in the fingers when we're doing the handstand, okay? And you need to have the fingers bent so that you can have better control in the handstand. We can perform handstands with many different hand placements. We can go narrow, we can turn the hands out, we can go wide, we could do a one arm handstand. The points that I've sort of shared today are to help beginners learn the handstand and find the technique which is the easiest to hold and control. Once you've mastered the basics of handstand, then you can start to explore more advanced positions. I hope this is helpful in your journey towards a handstand.